Another method of entering data into the DT Ocean GUI is to use test data files. And these are specially prepared Python files that will load into the variables uh, in the DT Ocean system. Uh, the rest of the tutorial is going to follow this process using one of these files. Um, and we'll provide that file for you so you can, you can follow along. Uh, these files are useful for perhaps mocking up a situation where maybe the data is in the database and you'd like to put it in there and you want to test it, test it first. Um, we used it a lot in the development of the tool. Uh, and for this part, I will follow step by step the whole process of the modeling from uh, entering the data to uh, visualizing some outputs. So I have closed the old project and I'm going to start a new one now. Um, I'm going to even give it a name. So in properties, I can call it title, fixed title example. And click OK. And as you can see, it's been named here in the title bar of the window. So this is a fixed title example, as I said. So I'm going to select title fixed as my technology type. I don't want to use a database in this case, so I don't click the select database um, icon. Of course, I can just, if I do click it, just close it. It's actually set up. So in this case, I want to reset it. So I don't have a database again, and then close. Um, and then the next job is just to initiate the problem. And less happens now without a database. There's no filtering options, but I do still get to choose my, my modules, my themes, and something called a strategy as well. So as we saw before, I'm going to select modules. In this case, I'm going to select all of them that are available, hydrodynamics, electrical subsystems, and moorings and foundations. And I'm also going to select all of the available themes as well. So economic assessment, reliability, and our environmental impact. And new to you is the uh, strategy manager. Um, so I click add strategy. And what the strategy manager does is it basically allows us to carry out um, running several modules at once. Um, so in the case of uh, the basic one, uh, this means that we're just going to run all the modules we've chosen in, in a line. Uh, for more advanced strategies here, like unit strategy, it means we can change some of the variables as the uh, modules are running through, and we can go back and, and compare those uh, different um, simulations that are created from changing those variables. Um, that's covered in, again, another tutorial, but just to show you that it's here, we're going to select basic because we uh, don't want to click play on all of the modules as we go. We click apply, similarly to the, the database selector, and we can Click close. You should also note here that uh, when I click add modules and add assessment, they've gone gray. It's a uh, one way process here. Once you've chosen which ones you want, you can't go back. But for the strategy manager, you can can change your selections. Uh, so there's nothing else to do. We click initiate data flow. And at this point, everything pretty much except the technology type is required and all our optional variables there. Uh, note that the icons here have changed. When we were working with the database and I didn't select a strategy, I had run current module and run themes. And this allows us to step through each module one by one. But when we select a strategy, that power is taken away from us and we can just run the strategy. If I tried to run the strategy now, I get a massive list of uh, variables that I haven't set. Another point to note is that in the themes, a number of the variables, the majority of variables are optional. However, the impact of this is that the more optional variables are there, the less results you will get at the end. So in general, you want to activate as many of these as, as you can, or uh, it makes sense. So how do we load data with our files? Well, uh, we have the files unzipped in a folder here called demo and this is the file i want to load which is fixed title tutorial scenario.py and that for that file also reads from a number of these folders here with with additional data so 
to load this, I will right click on hydrodynamics and click load test data. Then I'm going to find the file, which is usually in the directory I am running from. Click open, and click OK. And then eventually, by magic, the values for the hydrodynamics will be loaded. And there we go, they've all gone green apart from some optional values here. And essentially we want to carry out this same process of loading these variables for uh, each module. So once we've loaded all of the variables into the modules and the themes, you'll see that pretty much most of them have the green icon, which means they've been satisfied. So in fact, we could actually run this simulation now as it, as it stands. Uh, one thing I haven't said uh, um, before is these little cross uh, icons we have here. And the meaning of these little crosses is basically that you shouldn't enter this uh, data for this module. And for inputs, that's for two reasons. That's because either the variable is an input to the previous module, as is the case with the bathymetry here, or it's an output from a previous module, like the array layout, for instance, is an output of the hydrodynamics. And the point of this is that you shouldn't um, enter data that's going to be overwritten by, by what's happening in a previous module. Um, most of the data, as you can see, has been filled by the test data file. However, both for the environmental impact assessment and the economics, uh, only a subset of that data is prepared. The environmental impact assessment will work with the data we have coming out from the from the modules, but we need to enter a few more um, items into the economic assessment to, to get it to calculate anything useful. So for a discount rate, we're going to choose 5%. For uh, the device cost estimate, we're going to choose a million. And for the installation cost, because we're not running the installation or o &M module at this point, we're going to choose, uh, again, a million per megawatt. All that right one two three one two three and we're going to choose some uh opex estimates here so a fixed estimate of uh, 150,000 euros per year and what would normally be a hundred thousand euros per year of maintenance and we have to set a, a mean time to failure estimate here and I'm going to choose uh, 5,000 hours for a whole system array failure. You can play with these values to see uh, what difference it makes. It gives you a balance of capex and opex but all of these values here uh, I've entered are just for demonstration and it's likely these numbers are very low and so we're probably going to get a very good LCOE out of this, out of this simulation. Something else I want to do for the uh, later stage of the tutorial is force the moorings and foundations to use a particular foundation type. So we can do this with this foundation type option. And in this case, I want to compare gravity foundations to pile foundations. So I'm going to select gravity and I'm going to click OK. And now we're ready to go. So all we need to do to execute the basic strategy is click the run strategy button and we will get a progress bar uh, while the simulation is running. Once all the modules uh, have finished running and the assessments have completed, the results will appear at the bottom of the pipeline. So the configuration, the input section of the pipeline will contract and the results will expand. You'll note that the results are ordered in the reverse way to the inputs, as in the assessments are at the top and uh, the modules are at the bottom. So let's have a quick look at the results uh, we produced. So for instance, the array layout uh, should be as we expect because we forced this to be in this, this five device with a, a cross section. And we can look at the mean power production per device, which is very similar in this very simple case. 
And we can look at, say, this power production histogram, which shows effectively in this environment, the uh, devices are either working or they are not. Um, and you may say this is not realistic, but in this case, we've chosen a very limited probability set from the input data for the uh, hydrodynamics module to work on. So in that case, mainly we're getting cases where there's no output or total output. Um, if we look at the electrical subsystems, we can see, for instance, their bill of materials, and this is passed over to the economics module and basically gives costs and quantities uh, related to identifiers that come out of the database. And, and NAN here means it's uh, something that's been maybe manufactured on site or is a optional input, for instance, like the uh, onshore network costs. So let's look at the economics. At the top, we have the levelized cost of energy. And for this case, uh, it's reasonably high, one thirteen and a half cents. And obviously that's a single value. So we, we want to break down that. And so we see that for the CapEx, it was eight cents, OPEX, uh, cent and a, five cents and a half roughly. And we can see information, more information like CapEx versus OPEX cost breakdown and we can also break down the capex into into various uh, levels as well um, we have information like mean time to failure for the system as a whole which was ooh, 182,000 hours so this is a very reliable system we don't probably won't expect it to to break ever um, and we also get environmental impact assessment and this is per stage so this is one for the hydrodynamics and electrical the moorings and we can see what the impact was so um, these are scored positively and negatively positive is to plus 50 and negative is to to minus 100 and uh, the plus 50 bit uh, versus minus 100 is that we can't create life and so that's the point um, <laughs> So we can see that the hydrodynamics had very marginal positive and negative impacts. Note these are, are separate things, uh, positive and negative. Electrical stage again, very minimal moorings and foundations, a little bit more negative here in this case. Um, but because we didn't enter very much data into here, then we're not getting very much information out. We had more data than, than these assessments will give us more information. Uh, the environmental assessments also give you um, some recommendations. If we look at dictionary recommendations, they tell you maybe how you can improve your uh, your simulation in order to get a better a better result. Now the real power of the DT Ocean software comes from the ability to compare simulations and what I mean by that is the opportunity to keep one simulation like the one we've just done, change something, run again and then compare the outputs. So how wide would we go through out this process in, in DT Ocean? Well, this is where the simulation tabs comes into, into play. So if we look at the simulation tab, we see it's got one simulation default, and that's the simulation we've been running. Uh, and at this point, it's probably useful to move it so we can see both. Now I'm going to rename this. I'm going to rename this uh, gravity. And what I can do with this is I can make a clone, and that's effectively a copy of everything in the, uh, in the um, first simulation. Um, created into a new one, and I'm going to call this one uh, Piles. Pile. Now, what I can do with my new simulation pile is I can change one of the input values. So, remember, I set the pile, uh, the gra the foundations to uh, gravity before. I now want to switch them to pile. So, if I go to moorings and foundations and press reset. The whole system moves back as if the moorings and foundations module hadn't been run. Now, note this is a fairly dangerous process. You'll lose your results from the moorings and foundations and the results from the themes uh, that ran after it was run. So be careful when you do it. 
Obviously we have the gravity simulation. So if we switch, you notice that in fact, uh, it's as if it was been run before. So we, we haven't lost any of that data. It's just, we've created the clone and we've moved the clone to a different point in the simulation. So here we go, we want to change the foundation type again. So we find the foundation type and we're gonna set this one to pile. And then we can run again. So we just click the run strategy to create a new simulation. And at this point, it's only going to run the, uh, the Moorings and Foundations module. All the other modules are not necessary because they ran before. Um, uh, this run won't take very long. And it's done. So, for instance, what can we see? Well, if we look at the results for levelized cost of energy, we should see a difference between the two uh, simulations. So for pile, it's one, 0 0.132, and for gravity, it's 0 0.135. So we see the difference between the two simulations clicking between, and, and we can do this for different variables as well. So for instance, the cost breakdowns will be slightly different and so on and so forth. So we can also use the context area to give us some more information at this point. And if I click on the comparisons uh, context, uh, we can see here a, a comparison of the values of LCOE going through the modules. And this is what this module comparison plot does. And as we can see, this is the set to levelized cost of energy. So as we can see, as we go through the modules between the gravity and the pile uh, comparisons, we can see the LCOE is the same for hydrodynamics and electrical subsystems, but then increases between the moorings and foundations. Uh, the simulation comparisons would allow you to compare, say, a change based on um, how one variable change compared to the other. So it might be, for instance, how the LCOE changed for rated power, um, but it's not very interesting in this case where we have just the two. And that ends the tutorial uh, for DT Ocean uh, at, at this point. Uh, there are uh, more advanced tutorials for considering, for instance, different strategies and some of the tools that will help you uh, design some of the inputs, like the WEX simulator tool, for instance. Um, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. I hope you understood and yeah, enjoy using DT Ocean.